companies that go woke actually do go broke, it could be a billion dollar investment opportunity that all the biggest hedge funds in the world are ignoring. There are no consequences for going super woke in terms of trying to appeal to the far left wing in this country. And then Bud Light puts out this, remember it was a March Madness uh, advertisement, and it just keeps getting worse and worse. You know, we showed it to you yesterday, and it was Pepsi's controversial commercial that starred Kendall Jenner. And the ad even caught the attention of Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter, Bernice. She tweeted this photo, if only daddy would have known about the power of Pepsi. Companies going woke is the trend of their communications, products, and advertising materials, aligning their brand with progressive or liberal values and ideas. People who have noticed these trends have also noticed that companies perform worse financially after these branding changes. As a brand manager, alienating a share of your customer base with advertising materials and tweets that contradict their beliefs is not a good move, especially when they are highly invested in the issue. It's now common to see customer backlash and product boycotts over ideological issues like Anheuser-Busch's now infamous Bud Light partnership with Dylan Mulvaney. The paid Instagram and TikTok posts from their activists promoting the beer sparked backlash from conservatives who boycotted the brand in protest. In a desperate attempt to win those customers back, Anheuser-Busch's CEO in an earnings call meeting said this. We will need to continue to clarify the facts that this was one cam, one influencer, one post and not a campaign. And repeat this message for some time. This attempt to distance themselves from the controversial marketing campaign backfired when progressive customers also started boycotting the product. Really prided ourselves in working with brands that like to uh, support the LGBTQ plus community more than just putting rainbows on cans. This was a rare case where a brand was too woke and simultaneously not woke enough. But it did show that customers would be lost from both sides of the political aisle. On the one side, the more conservative, uh, community is uh, annoyed about the sponsorship. On the other side, uh, you know, the LBGTQ community is annoyed because Bud Light didn't come back and rally behind and take a stand one way or the other. So this video should really be called, Do Brands That Pick Sides on Divisive Issues Lose Market Share? But that doesn't rhyme. So I'm sticking with my choice. Since the post was first made, Bud Light sales slumped 23% in May compared to sales the year before, costing Anheuser-Busch roughly $60 million in just 31 days. Bud lost those sales to competitors like Miller Lite, Coors Light, and Modelo Especial, which overtook Bud Light as America's best-selling beer in the very same month. Customers are also becoming more aware of social messaging from companies. So even if advertising is in line with your beliefs, you can still respond negatively to it because it comes off as pandering by a company that only wants your money. But if companies actually do exist exclusively to maximize returns of their shareholders and ideologically aligned decisions like this can have such enormous financial consequences, then why the f don't brands just shut the f up and stop making their products a political statement? Well. There are three reasons why companies seem to be making this terrible mistake and three reasons why investing based on wokeness is a terrible idea. The first reason that companies seem to be making these terrible PR mistakes is their failure to adapt their marketing to new platforms that allow for unpredictable audience engagement, both good and bad. User-generated social media and content platforms have become an important tool in any direct-to-consumer marketer's arsenal. Marketing through official online advertising platforms like Google AdSense or Meta's Facebook ads is significantly cheaper on a pay-per-view basis than legacy advertising channels like television, radio, or newspapers. Online advertising can also be done by writing on the back of exposure given to influencers on similar platforms through paid posts. The reason that Bud Light paid Dylan Mulvaney to promote their product is because they had 11.5 million followers across Instagram and TikTok so their product would be seen by a lot of potential customers. Both forms of online advertising have the benefit of being able to directly call customers to action by providing a link to a website where they can sign up for a service or make a direct purchase. Advertising through influencers has the additional feature of aligning a brand with an inbuilt audience that has an inherent level of trust in the person selling the product themselves. Endorsements of bad companies can be highly damaging to an audience, particularly when they are watching an influencer for advice on a particular subject. To brands, that trust is an asset, and it lets them select their audience less indiscriminately than if they were advertising through legacy advertising channels. The Bud Light marketing executives that greenlit the Dylan Mulvaney campaign certainly knew that the campaign would clash with a large share of their customer base, but they probably expected that those customers would not be looking at these videos in the first place. Product executives use market segmentation based on geographic, demographic, behavioral, and psychographic divisions all the time. The best marketing campaigns can promote a product to two opposing groups with without alienating either. When Apple advertises its iPhone to children and young creatives, they focus on its cameras, the App Store, and exclusive blue text box 
boxes so the customer's friends know they are part of the crowd. When Apple advertises the same product to white-collar professionals that the young hip crowd wants nothing to do with, they focus on data security, reliability, and compatibility with other business tools. The example of Apple has much lower stakes because nobody is going to boycott the iPhone just because it appeals to the opposing group. But the company still has to be careful about where it places its adverts so it doesn't waste its marketing budget. When companies take a bigger swing on a more controversial topic, it can go horribly wrong if marketers target the wrong market with the wrong message. Procter & Gamble, the makers of Gillette razors, launched the Best a Man Can Be advertising campaign in early 2019. The short film showcased scenes of men demonstrating negative behavior such as bullying, sexism, and toxic masculinity. The messaging was overwhelmingly received negatively by the company's target audience, which was men, even though it received praise from groups that were not in the market for men's grooming products. Whenever you take a stand, you always risk losing a few people. And if nothing else, they're going to be buzzed about, they're going to be talked about, this is going to get a lot of attention, and that's always good for a brand. That's what happens when marketers pick their wrong audience, but the viral nature of internet messaging can make it hard to control who sees a message. When advertising through influencers, marketers have less control over segmentation because any post or video can go viral and get the attention of the part of their customer base that they didn't want to see it. Under normal circumstances, the Bud Light post would have just been shared to the influencer supportive audience, Anheuser-Busch would have sold some beer to a new group of customers, and everybody would have quickly forgotten about it. And that's the first reason why trading on the go-woke, go-broke investment philosophy is not going to work. This one example ended badly for the brand, but there's no way to reliably predict which missteps are going to go viral and which ones are going to be ignored. Like, respond to the things that are meaningful for you. Not because it's a great marketing moment, but because it's real because you actually believe it. Even the Bud Light incident, which is probably the most serious case of customer backlash against an advertising campaign, only resulted in a 15% stock drop. A large movement, but still well within the usual trading volatility of the company. Even if you were able to accurately predict the next major marketing fail, your gains could be wiped out by normal market movements. But that's just short-term speculation. The real play is to find companies that have changed their entire product offering to pander to one group at the expense of the wider audience. And there are plenty of companies doing this too. So it's time to learn how money works to find out if companies that go woke actually do go broke and why they insist on doing it anyway. This week's lesson was sponsored by Blinkist. Blinkist is a convenient app that distills the essentials from countless nonfiction books and podcasts into digestible 15-minute segments. Gain vast knowledge in little time. Blinkist isn't a reading substitute, rather a tool to provide quick book overviews or recaps to enhance your understanding. Utilize Blinkist to discover a plethora of topics at your own pace. If a title sparks your interest, delve into it further by reading the entire book. I recently explored a book on Blinkist, Positioning, by Al Rees and Jack Trout, detailing brand positioning strategies. Its insights greatly influence this video script. Blinkist boosts learning efficiency. After reading a book, I use Blinkist for a quick recap, reinforcing my understanding with key ideas. It then suggests my next read, starting with key points before I dive into a full book. With Blinkist Spaces, recommend books within shared spaces to friends or family. Members can access the books even without a Blinkist Premium subscription. Offering diverse content, Blinkist helps enhance various aspects of life including parenting, communication, and teamwork. It's an essential tool for personal development amidst our hectic schedules. Seize the opportunity to learn more and unlock your full potential. Get a 7-day free trial and 25% off Blinkist annual premium subscription by going to Blinkist.com forward slash how money works. The second reason that companies pick sides on divisive issues is because it works, but just not for the companies. There are companies that go beyond altering just their advertising and actually change their entire business offering to cater to a particular market segment. This involves changing not just marketing strategies, but also product offerings and hiring practices as well. Even if hiring based on identifiable features is illegal in America and most other countries, there are easy ways around these rules that companies can use to their advantage. Disney is frequently called out for putting a heavy emphasis on progressive messaging in their films and TV shows, and for casting actors and actresses based on race or identity. The company now has declining viewership in its largest franchises, Marvel and Lucasfilm, and their live-action remakes of legacy films. Ideological issues are also the basis for the company's disputes with the governor of Florida, the state home to Disney World, and the Disney Cruise lines. The mistake here is thinking that a company with over 180,000 employees can always stay aligned on issues. Hollywood has a progressive culture, and studio executives can eschew responsibility for bad decisions by saying an audience didn't like a movie because their bias is towards a particular group. 
Staying in line with the culture of Hollywood also makes securing talent easier for big studios. A big name actor or director will reliably bring in more viewers than are lost by making sure they can put their spin on the production. Ideological hiring is also a great excuse for companies looking to get the cheapest possible talent. The tragic recent story of the Ocean Gate company and their Titan submarine exposed some unfortunate corporate decisions made by the company and its founder Stockton Rush. One that's coming under a lot of scrutiny in hindsight was the company's decision to only hire young free-thinking engineers because they quote, didn't want to hire 50-year-old white guys to pilot and engineer their sub. Uh, gentlemen who were ex-military submariners and they, you'll see a whole bunch of 50-year-old white guys. Um, I wanted our team to be younger, to be inspirational, and I'm not going to inspire a 16-year-old to, to go pursue marine technology. It's very difficult for a career professional to defend 50-year-old white guys without attracting labels that could hurt their career, and so the practice of woke hiring can continue unabated. The reality of this company and others like FTX, Theranos, and WeWork is that they wanted employees that were cheap to hire and overwork, or employees that didn't have the experience to point out shortcomings in the company's operations. Since poorly managed companies can't say they are doing that, they instead say they have a young and disruptive workforce, which makes them almost impossible to criticize without being called a hater or worse. It's not good for the company, but it is good for the decision makers who need to avoid being fired or exposed for their ineffective management. The problem with betting against these companies is markets can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. If you believe that Disney changed its product offerings to be more socially progressive at the expense of quality, when would you have entered a short position? Disney's stock is down 60% from its all-time high in 2021, but it's up from when it supposedly went woke. Analysts unanimously agree that recent declines have mostly been caused by problems with the company's streaming services, company leadership changes, and declining viewership. That third factor could be the result of wokeness, but the conclusion of major franchise series is more likely to blame. Confirmation bias is very important to consider when doing any type of investing. Disney's stock drop can easily affirm any belief that investors have about weaknesses in the company when it was really more likely just coming off an exceptional rally. The third reason that companies do this is that if they get it right, it does result in higher sales, brand loyalty, and staff retention. The best way you can combat confirmation bias is to intentionally seek out information that disproves your theory. A report by the Chartered Institute of Marketing, an article by Rolling Stone, and a survey of ESG-listed companies found that businesses with strong social alignment with a customer segment outperform companies that remained neutral. Keurig, United Airlines, Carhartt, and Chick-fil-A have all taken strong positions on divisive topics, and yet they are still performing well despite calls from different groups to boycott their product. Keurig acquired Dr. Pepper Snapple in 2018 for $18.7 billion, forming Keurig Dr. Pepper Incorporated, which is now the third largest beverage company in America. The company's annual gross profits have increased ever since, reaching $7.3 billion in 2022, a nearly 5% increase from the previous year, which outperformed the industry standard. In 2021, United Airlines planned for half of its incoming pilot trainees to be women and or people of color. This prompted calls for boycotts, but United later reported fourth quarter 2022 profits of $843 million, beating investor expectations. Chick-fil-A has been very open about the company's conservative values, which has caused opposing groups to call for boycotts, but Chick-fil-A is still outperforming in the highly competitive fast food market. If companies get these messages completely wrong, it can hurt their brand, but it's shown to be a bet worth making. A handful of angry customers will typically be outweighed by positive press. Unfavorable examples can always be picked out. Some were just bad ideas, but most had more serious issues that social messaging was just a cover for. Good investing is about accounting for long-term trends, which means unfortunately, cringy corporate messaging is not going anywhere. But there is one more thing that you should consider, and that's ignoring the performance of companies that never even pretend to be the good guys. To find out why you shouldn't write off evil companies in your portfolio, go and watch my video on why ethical investing is bad investing. And if you want to get these videos a day early, subscribe to the Compounded Daily email newsletter to keep on learning how money works.